So this is Game Ball, a gaming-focused trackball gaming mouse, which instead of picking up your mouse and swiping it as you and I normally do, all of the movement here is done with this massive trackball at the front. Now at first, this probably just seems like a massive meme, right? I mean, why in the world would you bother with anything like this over a regular gaming mouse? Uh, but for a lot of people, this is actually a dream come true. There are a small group of users out there who do not have full wrist and arm mobility, whether they are disabled or just really injured for the time being. With a trackball, having all of that directional input literally at your fingertips is a lot more accessible. So is the trackball going to revolutionize how we play games and be the next big thing in gaming? No, but as a bit of a challenge to myself, I wanted to see just how good I could get with this thing in only one day. Just how cracked could I get my aim to be with a trackball? I mean, if it's possible to aim with this thing at all. Before we get to gaming, let me give you a breakdown of what we're working with here, because the game ball is one freaky looking input device. I mean, this thing looks like it came straight out of Doom Eternal. So one of the things that separates the game ball from other trackball devices on the market is that it's ambidextrous, which from an accessibility point of view is a huge advantage. Switching between the left and right handed mode as well can be easily done by simply holding the touch sensitive button at the front. Then we have a bunch of buttons on the left and right side which actually use Omron switches believe it or not. For right handed operation here's an idea of what the layout looks like and honestly it's pretty intuitive. Did take some time to get used to of course but I found it nice enough. Then for your scroll wheel functionality that's done with these touch pads on the left and right side of the trackball. So on the left we have the horizontal horizontal scroll, and then on the right we have the vertical scroll. And yeah, during normal desktop use and even in-game when needed, these felt pretty good. Then we have a small button behind the trackball for RGB lighting, which is kind of cool, allowing you to cycle through the different lighting modes. And then the trackball itself. Feels pretty good, I mean, as someone who has never actually used a trackball before, the operation here feels smooth, but also nice and grippy for your fingertips. It stays planted well in the socket, but at the same time can be removed quite easily if you need to clean it. The sensor being used here is from PixArt, which is really great to see, and the polling rate of the game ball runs at a thousand hertz. So then, now let's get to gaming. Now one way that I plan to kick my trackball aim practice into hyper speed was with Kovacs Aim Trainer, an aim training tool that I personally use a lot with my normal gaming mouse. So booting up some tile frenzy with the trackball, my score was 27. Okay, not good. As for tracking, well, that was even more challenging, a huge deficit compared to my my usual scores. At this point I spent a lot of time dialing in the sensitivity and overall higher sensitivity seemed to be the meta when using a trackball. It meant that I didn't have to do multiple swipes just to get from one target to the next and I was much better at holding a target when it came to tracking. At the same time though it was a lot harder to be precise with those smaller targets. Micro adjustments for example were a bit difficult with that higher sense. The solution? Mouse acceleration. Enter RoarXL, the best mouse acceleration software to exist, allowing you to fine tune the acceleration curve of our trackball input. Now the faster that we move the trackball, the more our cursor will move, and the slower we move it, the more precision we'll have. I played around a little bit with the different curves, and honestly, some of them felt way too aggressive. So in the end, I just opted for linear acceleration with an acceleration factor of 0.1. This might sound like it does absolutely nothing, but it's still really, really noticeable and does help out quite a bit. Now it's time for the ultimate test. Valorant. And yeah, at first I was getting seriously dunked on. The enemies were absolutely memeing on me, sometimes just standing still and sometimes air strafing and trying to knife me, and they were just like watching me miss everything. But eventually, the game ball started to click. Since aim in this game is mostly just good crosshair placement and click timing, the game ball is surprisingly viable. I was about three hours into using the track pull at this point, and yeah, in some deathmatches I was actually placing middle of the pack, sometimes even with a positive kill death ratio. I was still playing around and mixing with low and high sensitivity at this point, and in the end, I did opt for something a bit faster 0.25 at 800 dpi, which on any mouse this would feel slow to moderate, but when you factor in the acceleration curve, it does make it feel nice and responsive. So, more practice here, more Valorant deathmatches with the Vandal and the Sheriff, and yeah, the more I used the trackball, the more it began to feel more intense.
intuitive. Now, as you would expect, there were moments here where I would just completely miss everything, but there were other times that were really confidence inspiring and really proved the viability of this as something that you could actually get good at. I mean, at this point here, I'm only about five hours of practice in and I'm legitimately out aiming some people. So imagine what you could do with five days of practice, five weeks or months even. Could you possibly surpass what's possible on a regular gaming mouse? I highly doubt it, but just as some people get really good with a controller or foot pedals or other really crazy input devices, nothing could be truer for the game ball. Next up though, we have Apex Legends. The time to kill here is way longer, which means that you need to continually track the enemy and stay on target, which compared to crosshair placement and getting a lucky headshot in Valorant, this is way harder, especially with a trackball. Here I had to ramp up my sensitivity a bit more than I had planned since Apex is a lot more fast paced. And yeah, this was way harder than the death matches in Valorant, but I think it would just require a bit more time to practice and get really good at. Doom Eternal was very similar to Apex in that nature, very tracking heavy when it comes to aim, and so it does benefit from a moderate to high sensitivity, but a lot more enjoyable because the opponents aren't as difficult. Here the experience was really comfortable. My aim with the trackball felt semi-dialed in at this point, and you just move on from one enemy to the next. One issue that I did have here though was the precision and smoothness of the trackball input. As you can see here, I'm finding it nearly impossible to precisely adjust the sensitivity slider in the game, whereas with a normal mouse, this obviously isn't a problem. It doesn't feel like the trackball is necessarily jamming up or sticking, but it's obviously not as smooth as it could be out of the box. You could probably fix this with some key switch lubricant or oil, but it might just be something that gets better over time. Now for single player non-shooter games, the experience here is absolutely fine. Just find a sensitivity that works for you, sit back and enjoy the story. Combat mechanics are no problem at all and really not a whole lot to say here. This is one category of game where, yeah, a trackball input will have no problem replacing a regular mouse. All right, so time for some closing thoughts. And yeah, I am pretty surprised with what I could do with this trackball input device. Uh, you know, in the beginning, I had no idea whether I was going to be, you know, aiming with this thing at all. But by the end, uh, yeah, I was surprised by how comfortable it felt. Now I'm still a long way off what I can do with a regular gaming mouse, but in my opinion, that's not the point. The point here is to serve a completely different market, whether that's to be a more accessible gaming input for those with less mobility, or maybe just satisfy those trackable enthusiasts out there that want an ambidextrous gaming focused option. So if you are by chance interested in the game ball, I will leave it linked down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.